Number five, Las Vegas. I think anybody watching these videos are pretty curious about UFOs, and we'd all wanna see a UFO up close and personal, yeah? Well, what if you had one crash in your backyard? For this Las Vegas family, they might have had a close encounter right on their doorstep. No contact UFO curbside delivery. A 911 call about non-human beings caught the attention of local police. When on April 30th, around midnight, a police officer's body cam recorded something streaking across the sky. This event was corroborated across California, Nevada, and Utah according to the American Meteor Society, who probably answers the phone a lot about possible UFOs. And whatever it was that landed in this family's backyard, drone video showed a circular imprint in the dirt. When the family called, they claimed that there was an eight foot person outside the craft and another inside it, with big eyes and looking at them. The caller described them as being eight to 10 feet tall, looking like aliens with big eyes and a big mouth. Described them as being shiny and 100% not human. Now this wasn't just one random crazy caller as the whole family living there said they saw the same thing. The caller said that they saw a shooting star and now there's something in the backyard. The officer responding said he saw something fall out of the sky too, which is why he was so curious about it. Representatives from Nellis Air Force Base said they weren't involved with this incident at all and suggested contacting the police. Interestingly though, a spokesperson for the Pentagon didn't comment at all in regards to this event. And isn't that interesting? And if you're looking for way more footage about UFOs, well, hey, you already know Top 5 Scary is the place to be and then some. We got more UFOs than you could ever watch in a lifetime. So click subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss any of our scary videos from us, but do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more pieces of UFO footage and evidence coming up for you right now. Number four, Indonesia. Now here is an absolutely wild story for you. A Marine veteran is breaking a 14 year silence claiming now that he and his squad mates saw a UFO while they were deployed in Indonesia in 2009 and were threatened into silence over it. Michael Herrera was a 20-year-old rifleman sent on a Navy humanitarian mission during the 2009 Sumatra earthquake and the tsunami that would devastate the region. He claims that his unit was guarding a supply drop outside the city of Padang, and his six-man unit stumbled on something they were never meant to see, an octagonal, unknown aerial craft that seemed to be being used by some sort of clandestine government force. The Marine has an unmarked four-year service record and showed text with a fellow witness who refused to speak out about this incident, worrying that discussing this incident would jeopardize his life. Herrera claimed that while guarding supplies from insurgents, they had weapons drawn on them by unmarked forces who had American accents, who told them off and demanded to know who they were. These unknown soldiers took the weapons from the Marines and took their IDs and began loading ammunition, large weapon cases, and other things from modified Ford F-350s onto a platform beneath a large octagonal craft, which would rise off the ground and shoot away at an incredible speed of up to 4,000 miles per hour. Now for 14 years, Harara did not say a word on this incident. It wasn't until the recent wave of UFO sightings and discussions that he felt like it was finally time to come forward about this event. Now it doesn't really sound like a Marine to lie about something like this especially not one with an unmarked four-year service record like that. So what happened? Who were those guys? Officially sanctioned by the US government? Some sort of other organization entirely? The men in black? Is it fun to wildly speculate? It is. Number three, David Grush. David Grush is a former intelligence officer, a US Air Force veteran who has had got ties to UAP and UFO development and research, and you're probably gonna be hearing this name a lot if you're interested in UFOs and all that stuff, because he's been blowing the whistle on possible UFO activity inside the US, boldly claiming that not only does the American government have proof of extraterrestrial life, but that the American government is storing alien crafts for their own purpose, which kind of makes sense of that last story if you think about it, they might be connected. Now last week, Grush made headlines when he claimed that the US government has concealed evidence of a non-human craft from Congress. And Grush is trying to make people aware of this story. He claims that it's got an intact or partially intact craft, as well as he's got evidence of deceased agents and officers through crash site retrieval. Explaining, when you recover something that's landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots and believe it or not, it's true. 
quote. Does that mean that they have evidence of alien bodies? Deceased aliens? Now Grush claims that personally, he never saw any non-human evidence up close and personal, but he knows enough people within the program to confide that it's real, saying he knows several intelligence officers involved in the crash site retrieval program, as well adding that there's a decades long competition with adversaries to retrieve the materials from crash sites to reverse engineer the crafts for defense advantages. Isn't that so like humans? We got alien technology and the only thing we can do with it is build more warships. Can't do anything fun with it. Anyway, it's an incredible claim and if this is true it would be the story of the century. Maybe the biggest story in human history. This moment of truth that everyone is looking for and fighting for. This final proof that aliens are totally out there among us and we're working on their crafts. So is it true? <laughs> Is the truth finally coming out? All we can do is sit on our thumbs and wait and see. Number two, strange orb. I think this has been kind of a heavy video so far. You know, we've got these big claims of whistleblowers, leaks to the press, shadowy organizations, black ops mercenaries, people being silenced, retrieved crashes. We need at least one footage of something strange, a little black dot going across the sky to just lighten up the mood a little bit, you know? Plus, I really think footage of weird orbs is kind of the bread, butter, the roots of this channel, and I don't want to stray too far from my roots. This following footage that we're about to show you was captured sometime in June 2021 and remained dormant for years until being posted on the UFO subreddit, which is the most trusted source of UFO information in the human world, I think. When full disclosure happens, it's going to happen on Reddit before anywhere else. Now, this clip shows a small black spherical orb darting around the sky at that impossible to ascertain distance where you can't make out any features or anything. The object moves erratically. It doesn't seem like it's moving with the wind or being blown, but rather jerked around, like stopping completely and then going in the opposite direction, giving the impression that it's something that's being controlled. Now. Whether that means it's being controlled remotely or it's being piloted by something very, very small, I'm not sure, but it's something that's being driven, that much I think. Drones are obviously the most likely possibility, although I would say the object in this clip seems like it's moving just a little bit too fast to be a drone from this planet. We see a lot of these mysterious spheroid objects in UFO clips, and I have to wonder if they're all coming from the same source. Somebody check the manufacturer's logo on it. Now, it bears mentioning with any clip of a weird thing in the sky, very likely could just be a balloon, could also be some sort of camera glitch or artifact, and without any of the context or important key details in this video, like where it came from, who filmed it, and why, it can be hard to tell for certain just what this is. As much, not much to go on but speculating. So I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. You let me know if you think this is just circumstantial and distracting us from the truth, or if this is another piece of the puzzle. And number one, covered crafts. Of course, David Grush isn't the only person claiming the US government has impressive UFO technology hidden away. An unnamed anonymous whistleblower, probably for the best, claims that a UFO recovered by the US military is so advanced that its technology doesn't even make sense to humans at all. Claiming that this craft distorts space time. Claiming that on the inside, it's the size of a football stadium. This story was relayed from the whistleblower to lawyer Daniel Sheehan, who's a lawyer who specializes in aiding UFO whistleblowers. There really is a guy for everything, isn't there? The story goes that the US recovered a craft that was 30 feet wide and embedded in the earth. The crash site recovery crew sent an agent inside the downed craft and discovered like the TARDIS, it's much bigger on the inside, saying that he was disoriented and nauseous after stepping inside and discovering that the innards of the craft were impossibly large, the size of a football stadium while the outside was only about 30 feet wide. Now apparently size isn't the only thing affected by the wondrous craft, with the whistleblower claiming that the agent said he was inside the UFO for a few minutes, while the rest of the unit outside claimed that he was inside for hours. Now, a story this bold would require a great weight of evidence to go with it. And that's the kicker, because unfortunately we don't have much of anything at all outside of an anonymous unnamed source possibly relating this to a lawyer. There's no dates, no location given, and definitely no photos or footage. So can we rack this up? Is this a believable source, or is this someone trying to jump on the coattails of other whistleblowers and trying to drum up a bit of attention? Are all of these stories coming out right now proof that full disclosure is coming up on us, or is this just a carrot on a stick to keep us chasing forever and ever? I'm not sure, 
but I know the truth is out there, my ghouls and goblins. Number five, falling from the sky. Coming up first today is going to be this wild footage that was posted to TikTok quite recently. It might have flown under the radar, but now it's blowing up. And if you're into the supernatural and the unexplained, maybe you've seen it on your front page already in between videos of cats falling over. It was posted by user PMESASSO. And it showcases a truly bizarre encounter, and possibly a close encounter of the first kind. In this video, we can see something falling from the sky. Now, it's difficult to make out entirely what it is, but it looks more technological than not. It's not a bird. It looks a bit like it's a fallen craft or a drone of some kind that's been shot down. Do you remember that week or two in February where every day a mysterious unknown craft would get shot down and then the government would refuse to explain or comment on what would happen? Remember how that happened and now we've all just moved on from it? I'm still thinking about it. Anyway, after that craft seemingly descends to the ground below, we see in the sky that a bunch of military fighter jets seem to be in hot pursuit of it. Which definitely makes me pretty suspicious if there's fighter jets not even a minute behind a strange, unidentified craft. Now there are some doubters in the comments who aren't as convinced. Some say the crafts are there for an air show and the thing falling from the sky part of it as well. Of course, did they consider maybe the aliens were the one putting on an air show? And the government didn't want to be upstaged and that's why they sent a craft over. If I know anything about the US military, it's that they don't like being second best at anything. And if you want to watch a place that's the number one best at something, it's top five scary and it's scary videos we've got. If you can think it up, we've got a video or two on it. I mean it. Megalodons, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, aliens, conspiracy theories, horror movies, basically anything freaky under the sun or above it, we got two or three videos on. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss a single thing, but if you'd be so kind, do that at the end of this video, because I got four more mysterious orbs and UFOs coming up for you right now. Number four, Arizona's mysterious orb. Coming up next today on our list of strange sightings in the sky is is this mysterious footage of an orb-like sphere bouncing around through the clouds. This clip was uploaded and posted to the UFO subreddit a few days ago where it blew up almost immediately. Posted by user Amvion and shout out UFO subreddit, making my job so much easier every day. The clip is a snippet from a local news station in Arizona reporting on a series of wildfires, wildfires, reporting on a series of wildfires in San Bernardino, California. When the camera catches something a little hotter, as a pun, you see what I did there? You can see a strange little orb floating around high above the forests. Now, it's very difficult to tell from here, but it looks to be moving at an incredibly fast speed, with seemingly no method of propulsion or exhaust trails to be found. It can even be going through the smoke at one point during the video, which would be catastrophic for most aerial crafts, as this area would be far, far too hot to approach via helicopter. Now, a user in the comments added a little bit of additional insight too. It looks very far out from where anyone could be piloting a drone. Looks to be a few miles out in the brush. Any civilian would be heavily discouraged if not outright prohibited from flying a drone near a wildfire area with a possible crash with a helicopter being disastrous. So it has to be something that wasn't supposed to be in that airspace or maybe doesn't even know where it is. So it's hard to tell what's going on with this one. I'm not sure what any skeptical answers or rational answers could be beyond the usual catch-all of strange drone or weather balloon. The object doesn't move too erratically or non-humanly, so it doesn't seem like it itself is making the decisions. I'm really not sure what this could be, my friends, which means you know what time it is. You let me know down below what you think it might be. Or just tell me something nice about your day. You know, I don't know, something that made you smile today. Number three, something from the sky. Coming up next today at our number three spot is going to be this short, sweet, mysterious clip posted to us on the most reputable source of information on the internet, TikTok, by a user going by the name of Brian Daniel. Gosh, people have the weirdest names on the internet these days. Brian Daniel, what does that even mean? In this short clip, Daniel claims that near his home, something fell from the sky onto the ground below, glowing a searing bright blue, ethereally brighter than anything he'd seen before. Commenters said they'd seen the same thing in Florida where the uploader lived. News reported that it 
was a meteor, but Daniel claims that it goes much deeper than that. He claims that the next day he tracked the crash site of the meteor and discovered what seemed to be a government operation cleaning the possible crash site, filming some feds standing around with their thumbs and their pockets on the beach. From there, Daniel claims that a mysterious man in a suit was on his front lawn filming his house and him when he got home and he didn't look like he was from the housing authority. Eerie. For what purpose? We don't know. Now, as fantastical as this video is, I'm always more than a little weary to believe something from TikTok just because the app is very, very easy for anyone to edit content with. And this video is literally three disconnected shots clipped together. I know I'm a man on the internet telling you to believe things, but I think you should always be incredibly rational and skeptical and take everything with a grain of salt. And there's nothing to suggest that these three things were even taken by the same camera. Now, the meteor in Florida is real. That happened on April 13th. 2021, so jot that down, that did happen. But the thing that's really holding me back about this clip and the reason I find it more skeptical than I believe it is because the mysterious agent at the end of the video is wearing a suit that doesn't quite fit him. I thought they were the men in black, not the men in the dress for less at Ross's summer collection. <clears throat> Bet you didn't know I could go there. Number two, what's on the moon? And coming in next today is going to be this incredibly weird clip posted to TikTok recently by a user going by the name of Larry Lou. Now, this is one of the stranger supernatural UFO clips I've seen in a few minutes. You'll see why in a few seconds. You'll definitely want to see this. In this strange clip, we can see something filming something bizarre that seems to be orbiting the moon. We can see some unknown objects flying around our moon getting a little too close for comfort. That's our moon. Is that our own technology? Are these man-made satellites or are these scouts, drones, or something else not of this world? Now, before we really put our tinfoil hats on and get wild with the speculating, we need to talk about the zoom in and the quality on this camera. I am inclined to believe that this guy works for NASA because he seems to have the James Webb telescope in his back pocket. I have watched innumerable, countless, countless UFO clips for work, and I have literally never seen a clip this high quality. I was salivating watching this. I can't even talk about the alien stuff because I'm too busy focusing on the pixels in this thing. You can make out the, the footprints on the surface of the moon. You can see Neil Armstrong size 13 on the dust. You're telling me this guy shot this on his phone? Why is this man not filming every single supernatural occurrence on this planet? If we set this guy up in the woods, we would have Bigfoot, Mothman, the Loch Ness, all that proven, disproven, within an afternoon. <sighs> I need to take five, I need, I need a drink, okay? Okay, I'm good, I'm good. Back to the original video. Most people in the comments were like me, solely focusing on the incredible lens on this user's iPhone. A few people suggested that that could be the American flag from the surface of the moon. I find that a bit unlikely, but I don't know enough about moons to disprove that. So what could it be? Let me know down below in the comments, or hey, feel free to just continue to comment on how impressive the camera zoom is. What What is he working with there? What am I working with? I don't know. Number one, crop circles. I, I didn't need to say it like that. Coming up last on our list of UFO sightings we just can't wrap our noggins around is this footage that was taken in 1989. Now, I know the title says 2023, but if you really squint 1989, 2023, I don't know, they look exactly the same to me. It might be a vintage, but that just means the high strangeness has been aged to perfection. Don't dismiss it till you get your eyes on it. It looks like an excerpt of a documentary about aliens and UFOs of some kind, sort of like what you're watching now. Now, but bet the guy hosting this isn't even half as charming. In the video, clear as day, we can see two strange, small, metallic spheres racing around a farmstead, glowing bright against the shroud of the night sky. They seem diligently at work, creating an intricate pattern below in the fields. Some sort of circle in the crop, uh, an almost crop circle, if you will. I feel like crop circles kind of fell out of vogue in alien culture, which is a shame. I think they're very cool and fun. They always make me think of the underrated M. Night picture, Signs. I know some people hate that movie, but I thought otherwise. Anyway, I guess our parents were much more frightened by flattened designs and bits of the grain and cereal, and we just don't feel the same way. But I, for one, want to bring it back. I want to bring crop circle culture back. Now, this clip is pretty remarkable. Some say it almost looks too good, and there's been a raging debate in the UFO and alien community as to whether or not this was a real clip or a very well engineered hoax for darn near 30 years now. Detractors argue that it's CGI, while believers state that the CGI would be too advanced for the time. I mean, most CGI around this era look like Reboot, you know? Not to besmirch Reboot, but come on. 
Well, we probably won't find the answer today to whether or not it's a hoax or not because only you can truly decide that, okay? The truth is out there for you. Just like only you can decide if M. Night Shyamalan is a misunderstood auteur or a total hack. We're just not going to talk about the Avatar movie. Number 5. Las Vegas Body Cam My dear ghouls, things are heating up in the sky lately and the whole world is coming down bad with alien fever. If you're a UFO enthusiast, the odds are very good you've heard a thing or two about the recent sighting in Las Vegas. That's kind of building up to be a modern day Roswell with all the conspiracy and cover up allegations. NASA's planetary defense officer, which side note, I did not know was a real job, told Motherboard, a branch of Vice News, that a green fireball observed last month was not a UFO, but rather a small meteor less than a meter in size that landed smack dab in somebody's backyard. Now the Las Vegas police officers who responded to the call say they didn't find any aliens in a manhunt or alien hunt I suppose is probably more accurate but they do hope to find them in the future citing the city's close proximity to area 51 as a source of speculation now the problem is that footage went wildly viral over the internet when a police officer's body cam was uploaded we've got a little bit of this footage for you here today it's kind of hard to make anything out of it like most blurry alien footage but it's fun to let our speculations run wild and this tiktoker seems adamant that you can see an alien over one of the cop's shoulders. Personally, I think it does look a bit just like a light or like a headlight or something, but you let me know what you feel like you see. The case has been captivating, with the callers, the 911 callers, claiming that they saw tall, non-human entities in their backyard with big, glowing eyes looking at them. So what do you think, my fair and trusted viewers? Do you think these aliens got lost on the way to Area 51 to meet their friends and crash landed in somebody's backyard? Or was it just a meteor? Or did the aliens come from the meteor and the meteor itself was the UFO? Truly, who is to say? Who is to know? Hopefully we find out soon enough and when we do, you better believe that I'll be the first to tell you. And if you're looking for way, way, way more videos about all things UFO and alien. Oh my good gosh, do we have a lot of that on the channel for you to enjoy. Everything from conspiracies, cover-ups, to UFO sightings, we've got it. If you're sick of hearing about Little Green Man, we've got all sorts of things on crime, conspiracy, everything scary, it's on top five. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell as well, and don't miss a single thing, but you get to do that at the end of this video for me, okay? Because I got four more UFO sightings coming up for you right now. Number four, the Pentagon. We are at a truly exciting time to be an enthusiast of UFOs and aliens. It feels more so than any other point in human history that the discussion around aliens and UFOs is leaving the fringe sciences and starting to become accepted commonplace by respectable employed people, not just folks wearing tinfoil. Recently, the Pentagon released a video of a reported UFO zipping around near an Air Force drone and revealed footage to quote the Pentagon, everyone thought was truly anomalous, which is government speak for we don't know what the f this is. At the time, the object appeared to be moving with something propelling it forward, but a later determination would show that it didn't which baffled and puzzled the analysts as usually something propels you forward in the air. Now this hearing was very interesting for a few reasons. But foremost, it allowed us a little bit of insight into how government agencies go about treating UFO sightings. We learned they categorize them first by what they most likely are, starting with the obvious things like planes or balloons, which account for like 99% of all UFO sightings. And then when it's something they truly cannot immediately identify, they prioritize where was it found? How was the object maneuvering? Does it seem like it's being driven? Control. Does it seem as if it has a payload? Does it have something attached to it? The hearing started by saying that the Pentagon currently doesn't believe that they have any definitive proof of extraterrestrial life on Earth, but concluded by saying that we'll be getting another disclosure document coming soon, possibly even as early as July. So we have huge, exciting things on the horizon coming up in July, and I'm not just talking about the Barbie movie. <laughs> Number three, Jorge Ortega. Is it just me or are things getting crazier? Maybe I'm watching more UFO footage as part of my job, but it seems like every day we see more UFO sightings, like they're doubling, tripling over what they used to be. Yeah, admittedly, everybody carries a camera in their back pocket now, but it does seem like more people are checking out the planet. Ever since that streak in February, I feel like it's been an arms race for the coolest UFO footage. While pilot Jorge Ortega captures what some are describing as the best UFO footage ever, but 
I'll let you be the judge of that. He uploaded the video online, where it was found by an account called The Hood's Finest, where the clip went wildly viral on Instagram. Thank you, The Hood's Finest, one of the most trusted sources of journalism in these dark times. Let's take a look. It's definitely mysterious. That much I can say with complete confidence. It's really hard to tell what that was, but the way it speeds forward without any visible exhaust does make it seem highly, highly suspicious. You can't make any details on that craft at all. Now, Artiega claims this was the most frightening experience of his life, and it's really not hard to see why. A circular, spherical, strange object flew directly in front of his plane, then whizzed by his window. Whizzed, like, you know what I meant. I shouldn't have used that word. Artiega and his co pilot were flying towards Santa Fe when they first noticed the strange object coming towards them. The pilots believed that whatever they saw was non human in nature, and definitely not a balloon or another aircraft. Artiega claims that the aircraft was traveling at an incredible speed of 300 kilometers an hour. I don't know how many miles an hour that is for Americans. You guys are going to have to calculate that on your own. With the temperature at the time of the flight falling close to 5 degrees Celsius. With all that being said, it seems less likely that it's a bird or a balloon and possibly something far, far more mysterious. As always, I love to hear your guys' opinion on stuff like this, so feel free to debate away in the comments if you think you've got an idea or an angle on this that I'm not seeing. We need as many eyes on this as possible. Of course, you can also just, I don't know, tell me something nice about your day. Tell me something that made you smile today. I love hearing about that too. Number two, Chad Underwood. I think by now, if you're subscribed to the channel, and I hope you are, you've heard a thing or two about the Tic Tac UFOs that the Navy released videos of. And a lot of ways, these videos were kind of one of the first big steps for this recent surge of UFO, UAP stuff being taken kind of seriously, with these baffling videos leaked by the Navy that no one could explain. Although they were taken years and years ago, back in the halcyon days of 2004, the pilot who took the video has rarely spoken out about his experiences at all, for the understandable fear that he'd be lumped in with, quote, the little green men crazies that are out there. Well, I'm one of them, Chad Underwood, and I'm ready to believe you. Oh, Chad Underwood, that's the guy who filmed it. I don't know if I said that before. The story of the Tic Tac UFO began on November 10th, 2004, when radio operator Kevin Day reported seeing something odd and slow flying around the San Diego coast. It was moving approximately 140 miles an hour at a height of nearly 30,000 feet, so definitely not like any bird that I've ever heard of, and probably unlikely to be balloons. Commander David Fravor of the Black Aces identified the 40-foot-long white oblong-esque object hovering and exhibiting no exhaust propulsion, but seemingly darting itself forward at impossible velocities. It was Chad Underwood's footage that got shared and went viral. Via infrared camera pods mounted on the plane, we get sightings of these mysterious Tic Tacs in action. And I wish I had something different to tell you for the end of this point, something a bit more dramatic and exciting, but nearly a decade later and we are still absolutely no closer to understanding just what happened here, what's happening in these videos, what these crafts are, but maybe we'll get there soon. Like I said, there's supposed to be a document coming up in July that's gonna reveal all sorts of new research and information the Pentagon's been working on, and maybe that will be the big one, or maybe it'll just also be nothing, like it usually turns out to be. But who knows? And number one, California Army Base. We all wonder if military bases are hiding advanced technology, right? Like all of us do that, it's not just me. Like what kind of secret Secrets could be buried underneath Area 51. Wouldn't you want to know? It definitely seems like visitors from other worlds are just a bit curious too, as there was a mass sighting of possible UFOs out in the California desert, right above a military base, one Camp Wilson. Was it a sign of visitors scouting out the area, or technology from within being reverse engineered by the American government? Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp are a pair of ufologists, and they revealed the footage on their podcast, saying that the video and photos were shot all the way back in April 2021, but didn't appear until now, where a series of mysterious lights manifested above the base for nine minutes, prompting the Marines to launch a significant air and ground response. You know, just in case this turned out to be like an Independence Day kind of sitch. The Marines fired flares at the UFO and the craft disappeared just before the flares could illuminate what they were. Classic, that's just like every single UFO story, you know, right before the good part. The hosts of the podcast go on to say that there was no media coverage whatsoever of the incident. I mean, I don't really remember anybody talking about this in April 2021, but I also don't remember April 2021, so I'm not a trusted source. But since then, nothing really has come out about it. They got the tip from someone at the base, from a person who was pretty high up 
big quote. The tip was that there was more to this story that was being led on. Now, some viewers, some astute alien fans, have pointed out a noticeable similarity between this incident and the Phoenix Light event in 1997, where a series of strange lights hovered over the city of Phoenix, witnessed by multiple people in the city, but unknown to everyone and to this day, unsolved. So what happened here? Just one more mystery we'll never get an answer to? I'm not sure, but I'll never stop looking. The truth is out there and I want to believe. Number 5. Flying Cigars Okay, so the first piece of footage we're going to take a look at today is this amazing footage of a cylindrical UFO that's got even the skeptics and the experts scratching their heads watching. You come take a look and see if this makes you a true believer. You can see pretty clearly, unlike most UFO footage, there is something very strange in clear view. Now we see a lot of videos or stories about cylindrical UFOs, but we don't often get to see them so up close, so stabilized, so enhanced until this beautiful little clip. Now there's a couple things going on here that make this clip a little shinier than the average clip. For one, we can see the objects going behind the clouds, some low visibility there. The object shimmers with a metallic surface. It looks seamless, as if it's one solid capsule or a big giant pill. But most interestingly to me, it doesn't show any sign of propulsion. No trail of smoke, no exhaust, no big old rocket on the back. So what is driving it forward. The object is seen making multiple sharp turns at very, very high speeds, instant acceleration. So whatever is making it move is tremendously powerful. Perhaps there's some sort of fantastic anti-gravity technology that's keeping it up in the air. Now the original uploader said that this object, despite its incredible speed, made no sonic boom, when it definitely should have been. Viewers who are significantly better with numbers than me suggest that the object is going around 1800 kilometers per hour. So what do you think, my dear sweet viewers? Is this some of the most compelling footage of a UFO in a while, or is this big strange pill craft just a big pill to swallow? You let me know down below. And if you're looking for way more alien content, well, you already know the Top 5 Scary has some of that and then some. We have got boxes and boxes full of alien videos for you to peruse and enjoy. But if alien videos aren't your jam, we've got a video on just about everything scary under the sun and above. Of it. So click on through, make sure you hit subscribe, please hit that little bell, but do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more alien sightings coming for you right now. Number four, the mysterious triangle. Now it wouldn't be a proper list of mysterious UFO sightings without a classic sighting of a triangular black UFO. If you're a regular enthusiast of UFO content, you probably recognize that black triangle UFOs are one of the most repeated sightings, right after those cylindrical cigar shaped Tic Tac UFOs we just covered. Now this next clip you're about to see was sourced from TikTok by the account TR3B Black Manta YT and was stabilized and enhanced by other members of the UFO community to highlight the clip, and we're glad they did because this is about to blow your mind. Take a look. Now, a very popular conspiracy theory in the sort of UFO stratosphere is that the existence of these black triangular crafts are traced back to a purported top secret aircraft developed by the US military, codenamed as the TR3 Black Manta, hence the name of the TikTok account we source this from. Now, the alleged Black Manta is a classified stealth reconnaissance plane capable of vertical takeoff and landing, as well as extraordinary maneuverability. It's believed that it's got supremely advanced propulsion systems and radar evading technologies allowing it to operate undetected. Now believers in this theory state that sightings of black triangular UFOs are sightings of this classified aircraft and that the government uses UFO conspiracies as a way to divert attention away from their covert operations. Now, not to get too tinfoily, but that sounds incredibly likely. There are some who believe as well that the TR-3 could be proof of a UFO, implying that the craft was reverse engineered from downed or otherwise recovered alien technology. Obviously, the government isn't going to outright confirm or deny anything vis-a-vis -vis aliens, especially any top secret black ops level secret so officially, the government has denied any involvement about a possible TR3 Black Manta project. So what do you think, my viewers? Are these sightings of Black Triangle UFOs sightings of advanced military technology from this world or from someone else's? Number three, the lights over Vegas. Coming up next today on this list is going to be this strange footage out of Las Vegas. Sometimes what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas and blows up the internet, like this series of mysterious bright lights that hovered above the city for hours, being seen by countless 
countless people, and yet no one seems to be able to figure out what it was. Now, often the bright glow of something like this could be traced to flares or aviation training. That was the hypothesis put forward by the local news station that aired this clip, suggesting it could be activity from Nellis Air Force Base, Creech Air Force Base, or Harry Reid International. When someone from the station reached out to Nellis, a spokesperson told the station that no training was conducted over the valley the previous night, and a similar statement was made by Harry Reid International. But come on, I don't need you to be a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist to tell you that the government is not going to own up to that. <laughs> Even if you caught them with a big, big, clear, crisp photo of a, an alien craft, they'd still say they had nothing to do with that. It doesn't seem overly likely that if the government was conducting clandestine ops, they'd be so forthright in telling people about them anyway. So still an option, I'd say. Moving forward, the person who filmed these mysterious lights said that he's a local to the Strip and that he said that these lights looked unlike anything he had ever seen before up in the sky there. Much bigger and brighter than any tourist helicopters or the usual glitz and lights and attractions from the Vegas skyline. The lights apparently burned really brightly for about five minutes or so and then vanished again as they appeared. Now, the areas around Las Vegas are ripe for conspiracy. What with Area 51 being pretty close by? Could it be possible that these lights we saw were in fact high tech military technology? Could they be reverse engineered alien technology? Or could it just be a bunch of geese that all had Christmas lights wrapped around them? We may honestly never know. Number two, the flying saucer over Phoenix. Coming up next today in our collection of UFO footage collected by average Joes on the ground is this sighting from Phoenix, Arizona of what looks to be a pretty clear cut flying saucer flying sideways through the sky. Now we've seen a cylinder, we've seen a triangle, and we've seen a series of strange floating lights, so I think it's high time that we round out the collection of UFO footage by adding in a flying saucer, the most classic of all UFO sightings. You close your eyes, you imagine a UFO, you probably imagine a little flying saucer, a little glass bubble, a little green guy in there. In this clip, we can see some vaguely disc saucer-like effigy hurtling through the sky at a rapid speed. Now, unfortunately, this clip is a bit older and came at a time before 4K cameras were the norm, and so we can downright count the pixels on the screen. It's, uh, it's like a vintage throwback. It's hard to make out exactly what's happening in the clip, and the details of it are a bit muddled. It would be great to be able to see the craft in more detail and make out some of the individual elements of it just to prove or disprove anything. More than a few commenters when this clip was posted suggested that it could just be a balloon, which would definitely be a bit of a bubble burster. I feel like a balloon is the answer to 99.9% .9 of all UFO sightings. It's just a strange balloon that got loose. Now I can see some elements of that in some shots. The craft looks like it's reacting to the wind more than it does being blown around rather than soaring through the sky. Guy. As well, there's no visible exhaust or method of propulsion shown, but it could be possible that whatever entity was piloting that craft has technology above and beyond what we could ever dream of and has no need for propulsion. So what do you think? Proof of an alien civilization scouting out the planet caught on camera by someone looking up at just the right time? Or is this just a balloon that needs some hot air let out of it? And number one, the balls of fire in La Plata. And finally, coming in at the number one spot today in this list of amateur alien auteur films is this strange footage captured recently in La Plata, Argentina. Two fireballs were seen hovering in the sky, which is that's pretty odd, all things considered. They appeared seemingly out of thin air in the night sky and remained hovering in place for five minutes or more. It's strange that five minutes seems to be the key amount of time that fireballs hang up in the sky. At the time of the sighting of the fireballs, there were no storms, it's a clear night, and these fiery red flares light up the night sky like they're gigantic evil eyes staring down at us. Very imposed. We could see tons and tons of people coming out to take photos and gawk and try to figure out what was happening. So this isn't a one-off camera glitch or someone getting crafty with CGI. We've got loads of eyewitnesses accounting for this. Now some skeptics have suggested that this could be rocket vapor or something left over from a Starlink operation. Now maybe it's because I'm not a rocket scientist, I'm just a YouTube host sort of, but I'm not convinced. Many reports flooded in around this one particular incident with residents all describing them as 
shining fireballs in the night sky. Well, local government tried to come forward with an explanation, believing that it came from a petrochemical plant, with the leading explanation being that the flames were from two catalytic units in the plant, causing a flare for a short period of time. Now, despite that being the official story, there are of course still some skeptics who think that's just a convenient cover-up to prevent local residents from getting their hands too close to the actual truth, with some locals claiming they've seen lights from the plant before and they're never that bright or that high up in the night sky. So like all the other ones, I will leave it up to you. These mysterious balls of flame, something about aliens or something not about aliens? It really could be either one of those options or nothing. Anyway, something to consider. Number five, the USS Omaha. Coming up first today on our list of unexplained UFO sightings on camera is going to be this wild footage taken off the coast of San Diego from onboard the Navy ship USS Omaha. The video footage was shot on an FLIR camera, which is an incredibly expensive, fancy bit of tech. It's a thermal camera to detect heat. It's perfect for this sort of thing. And if you want one for yourself, civilians can buy these cameras. They cost $300,000. That's about one month's rent in Toronto. Very fair. In the footage, we can see what looks to be a sphere-like object flying over the ship before entering the water. The Omaha claimed that for days before this incident was recorded, they were seeing drone-like objects flying around their ship that the crew had no knowledge of. This footage was taken from a crew member trying to ascertain what it was that they were dealing with. Now there is some audio on the clip and it's illuminating. When the object goes into the water, we hear the sailors say mark, bearing, and range, meaning that the sailors on the ship were making a note of the coordinates and location where it went in, suggesting that maybe a submarine was sent in to recover or discover whatever was going on in there. Did it even submerge in the water or does it seem a bit too like the craft out right disappears going into the water. I wish so bad we could get some more angles on this or a follow-up to be able to find out what this was. Until then, we just have this strange footage to go off of and what speculation we have at home. There's a wild conspiracy theory that I just found out recently and I love and we'll mention it a few times in this video about a secret UFO construction facility under the water. Maybe this drone was heading on home. Who knows? And if you're looking for way more conspiracy theories about really anything, aliens, Bigfoot, JFK, you name it, we got all of that and then some on Top 5 Scary. We really have a video on just about anything and everything you can think of that's freaky and eeky. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss a scream, but if you wouldn't mind, do that at the end of this video, because I got four more stories of UFO sightings coming up for you right now. Whew, number four. Our next clip comes to us from the UFO subreddit, and it was posted by user The Firo saying, This video was taken by a good friend of mine on a flight to El Paso, and as soon as it gets noticed, it's gone. In the video, we can see we're in the passenger seat of a jet high above the ground. And flying around the windows is an unexplained object zipping around at high speeds. Saucer-like object looking a bit like maybe it was a frisbee that got tossed into the air by Godzilla. Now, it does definitely look like a classic flying saucer, like what you imagine a UFO to be, but not as many people were convinced. More than a few people in the comments section for this one were a little skeptical of this high flying footage. Several commenters suggested that this flying saucer is actually little more than a reflection of something from inside the plane's cabin, suggesting that if you pause enough and look right in the video, you can see the object's reflection being repeated in the window pane. Now, there are just as many people suggesting that it is a solid object existing outside the plane. The trouble is we've been given very limited footage and it's hard to tell and there was no follow up by the original poster to provide any more details so we only have this little excerpt that we've been given. Whenever there's a scenario like this I do like to leave it up to you my fateful YouTube comment audience. What do you think? Is this a flying saucer soaring above the clouds or just a reflection of some light? I could honestly go either way with this one. I will say it could easily be explainable as a reflection, but I also feel like the object has a certain weight to it. I don't know, I'm, I'm directly in the middle for this one. I'm a centrist on this video. It should have been the number three point, but it wasn't. Anyway, jury's out. Please let me know what you think of this. Let's move on to number three. Number three, New Delhi. Coming up next is going to be this clip shared online with the caption, a weird set of lights above New Delhi. 
Take a look-see. So in the clip, pretty clearly we can see, yeah, there's some strange lights going on in the night sky above New Delhi. There's a scattering of lights above the city's horizon. Now, immediately your first thought might be that it's drones, which is a reasonable assumption when it comes to UFO stuff. I feel like several videos that come out of little glowing lights dashing across the night sky usually end up being civilian drones. However, the original poster clarified that drones are illegal in India and are, aren't widespread at all for civilians. And on top of that, the area that's being filmed is said to be in the slums where it's incredibly unlikely that anyone would have access to drones. The poster added this little bit of context with the video. I I saw this today around 8 p.m. in New Delhi with a friend. It was massive. This cannot be a building as there is no tall building in that direction, only slums with heights of about four to five floors. Yet this building looked as tall as the Burj Khalifa. There was a moderate wind going on and I thought if it's drones, why aren't they swaying? Not to forget, drones are illegal in India and especially in New Delhi. It looked massive in the sky. I wish the camera saw what my eyes could see. It could absolutely blew me Away. I've been to drone shows, but this looked nothing like it. Any idea what this could be? Also, I agree. I wish our cameras did just capture exactly what our eyes saw. It would make all this UFO stuff so much, so much easier. And also, I would finally get a nice picture of the moon to have on my phone. Now, some people in the comment section on this clip suggested that maybe it was a laser light show, but that's just speculation and nothing concrete. Well, one particularly good suggestion from a commenter that did make me laugh said that the original poster should have ran towards the lights to see what happens and investigate up close and personal, you know? Worst case, yeah, you get abducted, never see your friends, family, or home planet again, but you also would get the ride of a lifetime and if you do survive to come back home you get an amazing story to tell people so live a little number two garden ridge our next offering for your entertainment and i hope your amusement is this short clip that was uploaded to youtube pretty recently ufo spotted over garden ridge texas in this clip we can see a somewhat strange flying object that looks a bit like a cocoon being propelled forward, or maybe even a beehive or something. The entity has no propulsion or trails behind it, which really doesn't explain how it's moving forward so fast. Some sort of anti-gravity manipulation technology that I don't understand. Is that too wild to speculate that an alien has that? Now we've seen cocoon-like UFOs a few times doing these videos, actually. We saw them a bunch. I don't know if you remember, one of them turned out to be Mr. Peanut, but most of them are UFOs. I'd say after triangle UFOs or little light clusters, I probably see videos of little cocoon-like UFOs like this more than any other kind. So what are these cocoon-like UFOs that keep appearing and why do they all look so similar? This lack of propulsion too is really puzzling me. Now the original poster returned after the fact to add a little bit of clarity in the comments. He said the object was moving with the wind, not against it, so maybe it's possible it's something like a weather balloon that has been swept up in an air current. That's usually what most of these clips turn out to be. I would love to see a statistic on how many UFO sightings are actually weather balloons balloons because I suspect it's probably like 99%. Another commenter suggested that this could be an object heading towards Randolph Air Force Base, speculating that the UAP seen in this video could be a manned jetpack or a very tiny stealth craft of some kind, which would be pretty cool, or even some sort of new drone technology the US military is developing. Now, among other things though, the original uploader did admit and suggest that this really could just be a balloon suggested that he thought it might be attached to a floral arrangement that somebody let go of. Hey, maybe an alien was picking up a last minute Valentine's Day gift. Or hey, maybe an alien had to apologize to someone, you know? Maybe a probing went wrong and a little flowers was the only thing that could smooth it over. I wonder if they'll keep that in the video. <laughs> Number one, the A-10 over Arizona. And coming up at our final spot today for crazy UFO footage is going to be this dramatic footage of a spherical UAP being filmed tailing an A-10 aircraft over Arizona. The footage was filmed by a mobile scope truck recorded by the DHS, that's the Department of Homeland Security. The craft caught on camera is one of unknown origins, well, obviously. That's why it's a UFO. The U doesn't stand for usual, it's unidentified. Now there's really not a lot to go on from this clip, 
As the original uploader didn't provide a ton of insight or backstory beyond the short clip, so we're left with mostly speculation. Similar to the previous clip, I have to wonder maybe if this is a drone of some kind due to its size in comparison to the rest of the craft which dwarfs it. Could this be an unmanned craft? Is someone piloting it from a remote location far away? Now earlier in the video I quickly shouted out a conspiracy which I recently discovered and I hope we can do like a full video on it because it was fascinating. Saying that a majority of the crafts that we see in UFO videos are scout crafts that come from a construction facility hidden somewhere deep beneath the ocean from a civilization that predates ours. This advanced technological facility is manned by an artificial intelligence that keeps it running autonomously and produces these small crafts naturally to scout out the planet and well I don't know yet what they're doing but something alien. Now obviously that is a very 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 tinfoil hat theory. I got it from a less than reputable website, but it is a ton of fun to speculate on and would certainly make sense why there are so many sightings of these similar objects if they were all literally coming from the same factory line. And also wouldn't that just be the nicest, I don't know, funniest little ironic cap to aliens if we we're spending all our time looking up but they've been below us the whole time? Anyway, something to think about. Number five, David Grush. So. If you've been following the topic of UFO disclosure closely, and the odds are good that you are because you're watching this video, you probably know the name David Grush fairly well. Grush is a former intelligence officer with years of dedicated service and involvement in UFO research who's been blowing headlines open with some of his shocking revelations, which, if they're true, would change the fabric of our world. It would change everything as we know it. We'd look at these days right now as the, the, the golden days, I think. <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. Hoops. We'd look at these days as like the days before Pandora's box opened. We're never gonna be able to close that seal again. Grush served on the UAP portfolio for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency as well as the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which is a bureau for investigating alien sightings. So Grush has the credibility. But what is he alleging? In a recent interview with News Nation, Grush drops the bomb saying that non-human intelligence has visited Earth and it's recognized and known by major governments, claiming that in 1933, a craft was recovered by Mussolini's forces in Italy and then intercepted by the US in 1944, meaning that the Vatican helped suppress the knowledge of this and the Vatican is aware of non-human intelligence out there. In this same interview, and if you're interested in this stuff, you really should just watch it instead of watching me talk about it, Grush alleges that the US has recovered quite a number of alien crafts over the years. With at least 12 or more sitting in US reserves right now being studied reverse engineered. Occupied bodies have been recovered as well. Now fascinatingly, Grush says he wouldn't exclusively call these entities alien, saying they can be extraterrestrial or interdimensional creatures. He doesn't provide too much of a description on what they could look like, and obviously there's no photos, sadly, just that they're out there. He goes on to state that the infamous Roswell incident in New Mexico was absolutely real, and that everything since then has all been a concentrated, prolonged disinformation campaign to get people away from the subject, even going so far as to say the US participates in widespread mass disinformation, leaking true details alongside falsified reports to keep UFO discussion a fringe subject, preventing it from being taken seriously. And hey, if that's the case, US Army, if you want to throw me a couple bucks to spread some rumors and disinformation, my DMs are open. The full disclosure interview is absolutely fascinating, fascinating stuff, and I highly recommend you go seek it out after this video. But you know, before you do that, you could always spend a little bit more time on Top 5 Scary since we've got lots and lots and lots of alien and UFO videos for you to peruse and enjoy. And if that's not your thing, we've got something scary for everybody. Ghosts, goblins, ghouls, Frankensteins, true crimes, you name it. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell to not miss anything, but do that at the end of this video, okay? I got way more revelations and truths to blow open. Number four, an Air Force engineer. Now Grush's forwardness is inspiring others to come forward with their own full disclosure. I mean, if they won't, we have to, right? An anonymous source claiming to be an aerospace engineer added an addendum to Grush's interview on Reddit, claiming that they could corroborate some of his points. Take a listen and obviously take a huge grain of salt as you're listening to all of this, as it is just someone typing on a computer, but I thought it was fairly interesting. 
As a current aero engineer for the US Air Force, 26 years and going, I can help you decode at least some of this interview. First, I know that Grush has only limited ability to talk about the subject. He did get clearance to speak to a certain extent, but he must withhold quite a bit in order to avoid very serious law violations. So expect him to be holding back some things he could say, and this also necessitates rephrasing on the fly language he would normally use. Second, the retrieval program he talks about is real and is the most highly classified program in the US. The program is called Zodiac, and this may or may not come out to the public soon. Take this in when viewing the man's speech. He is trying to talk to us about the most highly classified project in the world. People have died, lost careers, lost family to the secret. So to say this is stressful to talk about would be an understatement. Should I be talking about this right now? Should I be talking about this? <laughs> Am I gonna get the channel shut down? Third, when he shook his head talking about the spacecraft and alien, because we don't really think this is what they are. But this term is in common use publicly and is as close as we can describe the phenomena to general public and be understood. These things, these UAP are much more than spacecraft. They are transmedium interdimensional craft to the best of our knowledge. And the alien aspect, this is just the easiest term we have because we don't really know for sure what they are, but this term is close. At present, we consider most of these beings to be advanced biological AI. Ooh. Lastly, I can tell you from my own experience while on duty, these are real. I can tell you this because I was present on two occasions. I wasn't read into this program, so I can only tell you I was there on two occasions, happenstance, and they're as real as the nose on your face. Well, as you can see on my face, my nose is pretty real, pretty here, all natural, no work done on that thing. So that means this guy's story is real too, and a fascinating story it is. Number three, Stephen Greer's disclosure. Dr. Stephen Greer is a renowned ufologist and a former physician intent on waking the public up and achieving that full disclosure. Possibly inspired by the surge of whistleblowing in recent months, he held a press conference with several key witnesses and testimonies that he believed would provide adequate disclosure and get the truth out there. Now, the whole thing is available online, and assuming we take all of these things as fact and it's not a very well-organized grift, the secrets revealed within are life-changing. Greer claims that many different civilizations of extraterrestrials have all visited Earth, okay? Not just one species or one civilization, but lots. Now, he reports that as of now, no non-human entities have displayed an outward hostility towards humans, which is nice. That's one less thing to worry about. Don't have to worry about the Covenant coming in anytime soon. Like Grush, Greer claims that the U.S. has had access to non-human craft, and they've been studying the tech for breakthroughs in weapons, in cloaking, propulsion, energy technology. Now, this is the really fascinating part, is a claim that one reverse energy engineered extraterrestrial technology is pre-programmed life forms, a sort of synthetic artificial life which are mistaken for aliens, described as biosynthetic AI, which sounds very similar to what the aerospace engineer was talking about in the last point. So maybe they share a Google Drive and they're getting ideas from each other, or maybe they're onto something. Another huge bombshell is allegations that within the US government, there's a shadowy clandestine group that was established in the 50s that operates free from the government's wishes, and they conceal alien tech and hoard it from the rest of the world to further their own goals. They're apparently very good at targeting and downing extraterrestrial vehicles, and Possess the tech and manpower to threaten security. Now, these are bold claims, but in this day and age, it's going pretty difficult to ascertain what's a bold claim and what's the truth actually leaking through the cracks. I mean, everybody's talking about biosynthetic AI aliens. Maybe biosynthetic AI aliens are out there. Number two, Corporal John Wayne Gant. Now, if y'all remember to the last part of this video, not the previous thing I just talked about, but the last five parts I talked about it part one. We spoke of the testimony given by the Marine Michael Herrera, who claims that he saw paramilitary forces that seemed to be American loading weapons and munitions into an octagonal, non-human looking craft while he was deployed in Indonesia in 2009. Now, the story sounded outrageous, kind of like the plot of a video game, but also sound extremely similar to an eyewitness account from another Marine years and years and years earlier in Peru. Now, you take a listen to the statement by Lance Corporal John Wayne Gant. Lance Corporal Wayne Gant had been a Marine 
Marine since 1994 and in 1997 was deployed to Peru. Alerted to a possible friendly ship that had crashed at 3 a.m., he and a few other Marines drove out to the crash site in Humvees to investigate. After hours of searching through the brush, they found a gash in the land where it seemed as if something super hot had cut through the land, claiming that it looked as if a laser had gone through with surgical precision. And at the peak of the gash was this huge craft, non-human in nature, aerodynamic but organic, looking bumpy, notched, and alive, and dripping an unknown fluid. Most shockingly, he claims that inside the craft felt like he could experience something communicating with him telepathically, saying that they meant no harm, and were peaceful in nature and needed assistance. Now he claims shortly after this, helicopters and men in black military uniforms took him away and threatened him into silence, threatening his family and his livelihood if he didn't comply. Now he sat on this story for years, only speaking out about it years after. It sounds very similar to the story presented by Herrera. Now do you think this is fact or fiction? The video interview seems very genuine. The story seems complicated and very detailed for a hoax. Hopefully we know the truth on this, or, hey, maybe it's better not knowing. And number one, footage from the Hudson River. And coming in at the number one spot today is going to be some shocking footage captured on an infrared security camera on the Hudson River on a marina. We've talked a lot about shadowy governments, secret retrieved alien crafts, decades spanning conspiracies, psyops, cover ups, secret organizations, and I just thought we could all need a breather, you know? <laughs> something light, end the video, something fluffy and fun. And it's about time I included one clip of a grainy, strange object darting across the sky that we can all argue about or speculate on wildly. It's, it's the most fun part of UFO stuff. The clip is short and sweet and you get everything you need. We see a pretty clear view of a marina and then bam, right in front of your eyes. Seems like somebody hit the FTL drive is taking off to a new galaxy, right? 12 parsecs away. Like what else could that be? Now I always try to play fair with the skepticism. Some commenters aren't convinced that this is proof of mass relay based travel in starships with some saying that it's as simple as a security camera bugging out and if you'll pardon the pun, catching a bug flying close by at a particularly high speed. Leaves a trail because the longer shutter speed being used by the camera at night, the object appears so brightly because it's illuminated by the infrared LEDs in the camera, which are designed to illuminate objects close to the camera at night, which all sounds very reasonable. But at the same time, now I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've been talking about aliens. Maybe it's because I watched the video slowed down a few times, but it really seems like it's something just blasting off, you know, blasting off like Team Rocket. The object appears out of nowhere for a few frames, shoots off into the dark, and then vanishes. It doesn't seem like a bug is what I'm trying to get across. But maybe that's just because I want to believe, you know? We're getting closer and closer to it every day. It's only a matter of time now before you log on to YouTube and you see Top 5 Scary uploading Top 5 Coolest Aliens I've talked to personally, and the thumbnail's gonna be me shaking hands with one. Look forward in the next couple weeks.